Welcome to Enjoy the Journey podcast, where we interview expert entrepreneurs and thought leaders to help guide you in pursuit of financial freedom. Presented to you by Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, and Sam Panetta, the Money Man, where we help service-based business owners remove cash flow bottlenecks, maximize their profits, and turn business profits into personal wealth. G'day guys, this is Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, and we're back for another episode of the Enjoy the Journey podcast. Now today I wanted to do a solo episode because I wanted to talk about something that's extremely important. It's an often overlooked aspect for many business owners that I've been observing lately, and I wanted to take some time to educate you guys around some really simple principles that are going to help you create more profit, more free time, and more personal wealth. Now in business, many business owners are flying blind. Of course, they want to grow and scale their business, but they're focusing on the wrong metrics. And the metrics that they're typically focusing on is revenue. They have some aspirational, ego-driven goal in terms of their revenue that's ultimately guiding them to go from having 10k a month to 20k a month, or 20k a month to 40k a month, 40 to 80, or whatever the number may be. But what they're often overlooking is the significance of what really matters when you're growing and scaling a business. As it was famously said, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is king. And there's so many business owners that aren't following the right metrics in their business to allow them to achieve what they really define as financial freedom. Let's dive into this in a little bit more detail, guys. So as a business owner, we typically go through five stages as we grow and scale our business. Now, I understand that there are many stages beyond the five that I'm going to tell you about, but I'm talking about a true lifestyle business because I find that once you scale your business to a particular point, you essentially do create a job for yourself. And it can often be very difficult to phase yourself out. Not impossible, but difficult. And we refer to this as the wealth pyramid. And the wealth pyramid applies for both your personal wealth journey just as much as it does for your business. Now, I want you to imagine a pyramid, and that pyramid has five stages. At the bottom is battle, the second tier is comfort, the third tier is growth, the fourth tier is freedom, and the top tier is abundance. Now, I also want you to visualize a chart. I want you to visualize a graph where there is a line that goes from the very bottom left-hand corner of the graph and then works its way up with an exponential curve. And this is how we need to look at our business journey. Now, I'm gonna describe these five different stages to you guys, and I want you to really think about what stage are you at right now? Because it's by looking at this through this particular lens that it's going to allow you to declutter all of the competing priorities that you have right now in your business to allow you to work on the right things that are going to allow you to push the needle forward. The biggest problem is, particularly as you're trying to grow and scale your business, is there are so many things that you could be doing. But what we should be considering and asking ourselves is, should we be doing them? And this is the big difference between a successful entrepreneur, one that's able to grow and scale a profitable lifestyle business, And somebody who ends up working themselves into the ground, spinning the wheels, ending up with all of these half-built bridges and never getting anything done. So this is extremely important. So stage one, we've got battle. Battle is typically where your revenue is less than $10,000 a month. You have a deficit in your cash flow, meaning that your business is a cash any monster, or it is a roundabout break-even. Your wealth is probably declining because you are utilizing your wealth, whether it be your cash on hand or you're taking on debts, in order to get your business up and running and scale it to that next level. Now, the next consideration is your time. You are spending more than 2,400 hours a year in your business. Now, I'm going to come back to this point later because this is an extremely important metric that very few business owners are considering. Now, your problem is typically two things. You have no clarity and you have no plan. And your focus should be on mindset, it should be on positioning, and it should be on planning, having the right forward-facing plan to be able to get you from this battle stage to comfort stage. Next, we've got comfort. 
Comfort is where your business is doing less than $30,000 a month. You're around about that break even, you're probably taking an income from your business, but there's not really any profit to speak of. Your wealth is stagnant. You're not burning your wealth, but it's not going anywhere either. And you're working around about that 2,400 hours a year as well. Your problem is time and your problem is cash flow. You have so many competing priorities and you don't have the means available to hire your way out of these problems. Your two focuses should be pricing, having value-based pricing that has enough margin to help you with your cash flow, and having the right systems. Systems in place that are going to allow you to work more efficiently and to deliver systematic value to your clients and customers. Now, next, we've got growth. Growth is where you are doing less than $60,000 a month. Your profit typically is between 10 and 20% after you've taken a market income from it. Your wealth is growing. You're working more than 2,000 hours a year, but less than 2,400 hours. And your problems are team, getting your team on the same page as you, and strategy, having the right forward-facing strategy to get everybody on the same page. Because your strategy at Battle and Comfort was solely reliant on you. And your strategy at growth is about how do you inspire your team to deliver on your vision. Your focus should be scale. How do you scale things up and do things at a higher level? Management. How do you oversee your team to make sure that they are effective and productive? And efficiency. How do you make sure that you do things efficiently with as little wastage as possible? Next, we've got freedom, where you're doing less than $100,000 a month. Your profit margin should be between 20 and 30% after you've taken a market, uh, market income. Your wealth is scaling, whether it be directly in your business, but you should be at this stage diversifying your wealth and turning business profit into personal wealth. Your time in the business is less than 1,760 hours a year. Your problem is purpose and leadership. You've now pretty much got disconnected from being a technician in your business. And you need to find a new purpose of how you lead the business forwards from the front. Your focus should be increasing your business value. It should be diversifying your wealth or diversifying into other businesses. And it should be mentorship. You should be mentoring your management team and your team as a whole to inspire them to do more, to do better. And finally, we've got abundance. Abundance is whereby you're doing more than $150,000 a month. Your profit should be 30% or more. Your wealth should be thriving. You should essentially have more money and more cash flow than you pretty much know what to do with. And your time in the business should be less than 1,500 hours a year. Your problem is around legacy and impact. It's about understanding what are you going to do to continue to carry the torch, to be able to make impact in the world, make impact for future generations, and make a meaningful impact in your team. Your focus should be influence. How do you leverage your position to be able to do more in the world? It should be intergenerational wealth planning. How do you stop thinking about what you want and start thinking about how you set up the next generation for success? And it should be giving back. You should be considering what impact you can make through philanthropy and being able to make a difference, leveraging your position of abundance. So let me ask you guys, Out of those five stages, battle, comfort, growth, freedom, or abundance, where are you right now? Now, how long have you been there? And ultimately, out of these five stages, where do you want to go and by when? These are really important questions, guys. And here's the thing. In business, we need a clear North Star. Yes, revenue is important. Without revenue, we cannot have profit. However, there are more important impacts where revenue becomes a lag indicator for all of the other great work that you do in business. And here's the thing. If we were solely and blindly chasing more revenue, there would only be one thing that we would focus on technically two things. We would focus on marketing and sales. 
we would continue to market, we'd become better marketers, we would spend more money on marketing, and then we would focus on sales. Every single person who come in the door, we would sell them. But I'm sure that you can answer right now that selling every single person that makes an inquiry with your business is not necessarily the best way to go about things. The best way to go about things is understanding who is a person that you want to work with, that you can add value to, that adds value to your business, and making sure that you can actually deliver on your promise because there are four key quadrants in any business. There is marketing, there is sales, there is delivery, and there is growth. And it is focusing on all of these four areas that allows us to get the outcomes. And there are only three outcomes that matter in your business. There is making more profit. There is creating more free time. And there is creating more personal wealth. And this is where our mantra comes from, that we want all of our clients to be in a position where they can create $400,000 a year in profit after they've paid themselves a market rate in salary. Secondly, they can work less than four days a week and 44 weeks a year. This is where the, 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 the time comes into play of the 1,760 hours. And they can fast track their way to building $4 million in net wealth. Because think about it. You have $400,000 a year in profit. Could you possibly spend all of that money The answer is, I'm sure you could. But is it going to have that much of an impact in your life? There comes a point where you reach a certain level of income where there is a diminishing return or a diminishing quality of life. Think about it. You get to a certain level of income and you're ultimately just going to be buying more expensive things. Instead of driving a Lexus, you might drive a Mercedes or a Ferrari. Who knows? Instead of going on flying in, in coach, you fly business class or first class. All of these things are not really adding any more quality to your life. There's minor uh, conveniences, yes. But the reality is that your lifestyle can very much remain about the same. More experiences and, and better quality of life. But the aim is that we have more surplus to do things with. Now, the free time. What's the point is there to have all of the money in the world to be able to make this great level of, of income from your business if you can't even enjoy it? Imagine having a three-day work week each and every single week and then being able to have two months off a year or around about two weeks a quarter to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And then what about fast-tracking your way to building $4 million in net wealth where you have the ability to have around about $200,000 a year in passive income? And once again, this is just an estimate because we're assuming that that portfolio will make us about a 5% passive income. In addition to your 400k a year, you've got an extra $200,000 of passive income that you have the ability to do lots with. That's where we create that financial abundance. So what I want you to pay attention to, guys, is are you focusing on the right North Stars in your business? Over the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about the idea of building wealth through property about manufacturing wealth through strategies like the dual occupancy subdivision and looking at alternative income-based strategies of using alternative property assets that allow us to create more passive income. Because the whole idea of passive income is giving you the opportunity to win back your time. Your time is one of the most valuable resources that you have, which is the reason why we need to set a target for our time allocation each year. This is a strategy that I've been doing for quite a while now, and it has dramatically changed the way that I invest my time both in my life and in my business. Because time is ever-present, right? Until such a time as we run out of time, we our, 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 our card gets punched short, and we ultimately come to the realization that we're not going to be around forever. We take time for granted. When we start tracking it, we start improving it. Because what gets tracked gets measured, what gets measured gets improved. And I urge you to start measuring the amount of time that you've invested in your business each and every single week. 
our budget for time that we are going to have available is let's assume that we want to work four days a week, okay? So we decide that we want to work 10 hour days, four days a week, so that's going to be 40 hours a week, okay? And we want to do that for 44 weeks of the year. That now gives us a budget of 1,760 hours a year. Now, that gives us a budget per quarter of 440 hours a quarter. So it's like when you're competing against a, a, a clock, a stopwatch. You immediately are conscious of being measured. And when you measure something, it gets improved. If you're a runner, running without a, a, a clock or a time that you're chasing, you typically don't run as fast as if you're running with somebody running beside you. Because you're trying to keep pace with them, right? You're trying to overtake them. You're trying to make the best possible time that you can. And in this time, we want to make most effective use of our time in our business, so we need to limit the means that we have available, and then we limit the means that we use. This is a critical point that many entrepreneurs overlook. So imagine that you track and measure your time, you give yourself a 40-hour budget of time a week to be able to allocate. How differently are you going to work? How will that impact the way that you consider how you invest your time? What things would you decide not to do anymore? What things would you improve and optimize? This is a game-changing concept that I know is going to help you scale these five levels of the wealth pyramid even faster. Now, in the process that I just described, I talked through a series of problems and what you need to focus on. And this is really important because I find that in business, we're often comparing ourselves to others. We're speaking to our, our business colleagues, our friends, our mentors, people in other coaching groups that we're a part of. But what isn't discussed very often is that many people are just at different stages and they're focusing on the complete wrong things based on where they are in their journey. The reality is that there are certain things and prerequisites that need to be mastered at each stage of growth of your business in order for you to move forwards to the next stage. And until you finish these things, until you implement these things and get them right, there is absolutely no point focusing on anything else. For example, I see that there are individuals who are focusing on creating systemization plans in their back end when they're under $10,000 a month. You don't need to focus on systems in your back-end delivery until such a time as you've mastered your sales and marketing. The only thing that's going to get you out of that, that 10k a month to that 30k a month is making sure that you've got the right positioning in the marketplace to attract your ideal avatar. Because here's the problem. At that low level, you typically have this street fighter mindset where you are willing to work with anyone because you want to put money in the bank. And for that reason, you end up working with the wrong people who just consume your time. They end up paying you the least amount of income, they take the most amount of effort, and they ultimately mean that you do not have enough time to be able to get from that 10 to 30k a month. This is where having the right mindset, then having the right positioning, and also having the right plan can hold you accountable to having that higher standard of only working with the people that are going to allow you to push the needle forwards. Next, once we get to that kind of 30K a month range, the big focus is pricing. You've proven your model. You've got runs on the board. You should have happy clients. And it's at that level that we can start pushing the price because price is a representation of value. When people pay, they pay attention. And when people pay a lot, they pay a lot of attention. This scarcity mindset that many individuals have of, I want to be a, a competitive, competitively priced in the marketplace. I want to be lower than my competition is the wrong way to go about business. You should be leading with value. You should have a value-based pricing and then you should be charging an amount that gives you the margin to deliver an exceptional amount of value above and beyond what your clients are paying, which is almost impossible to do when you are charging cheap prices. 
and then you need to have the right systems. Now, systems are not just your back end. This is having the right marketing systems, the right sales systems, and the right delivery systems that allow you to leverage your time and systematically bring ideal clients into your business and be able to convert them into money. Then at growth, we need to start scaling a team because you realize that you cannot do all of this for yourself. Now, maybe you don't want to get to 60K a month or more. Maybe you're happy staying at that 30K and that's completely fine, but you've got to realize that your business, until you scale a team, is completely reliant on you in order to keep the wheels turning. If you want to work four days a week, on that one day a week that you're out of the business, the work's piling up. If you want to be able to go away for two months of the year, for that two months of the year, the work stops. And not only does the work stop, you now need to come back and catch up to get the wheels turning again. And it is always the hardest to take the first step from a standing stop. So what if you could create a team to create the leverage that would allow you to have the freedom and flexibility to have a true lifestyle business? A lifestyle business that doesn't require you to be online and working when you're supposed to be enjoying the fruits of your labor. Because there are so many solopreneurs or small business owners that I've seen that are more than happy to go away and sit on their laptop the entire time. That is not what business is supposed to be about. You're supposed to have the opportunity to turn off and recharge the batteries. So in order to grow, we need to focus on team and we need to focus on strategy because those are the biggest problems. We need the right strategy that allows us to scale a profitable team and we need to have the right people in the right positions that allow us to deliver the same level of value that you did when you were working with the clients directly. And then freedom. We now need to focus on purpose and leadership because these are the biggest problems. There are so many entrepreneurs out there that once they get to that leadership position, they've had this success, they've got to say that 100K a month or they've got over seven figures and the foot comes off the accelerator. It should not be, okay, I've achieved what I want to achieve, now I'm, I'm set, I'm just going to maintain. It should be, no, great, I've achieved this, now what's next? Because you've already proven the business model works. It is the hardest to get from zero to a million dollars, and it's nowhere near as hard to get from a million to two million. All you need is the right North Star. So you need to refine your purpose. What is it that you're trying to achieve, and why is that important to you? And then you need to focus on your leadership. You need to learn the right leadership skills to be a thought leader in your industry, to be able to lead, to lead your team effectively, and to be able to support them, to maximize the business value, to maximize the profits, and to diversify your wealth from your business into your personal wealth. Because business is risky. There are many seven-figure businesses that have failed. Just because you were at seven figures does not mean that you are impervious to hardship. You should be focusing on taking chips off the table, diversifying, but focusing on using your business as a vehicle to achieve financial freedom. And you should be focusing on mentoring. Become a good mentor. Show people what you've done and share with them the gift that you've discovered through growing and scaling a business, whether it be members of your team, or other people that you can mentor that are trying to get into your space. Because trust me, there is nothing, there's nothing more fulfilling than being able to mentor somebody to reach their fullest potential. And then abundance. The problem is legacy and impact. What legacy do you actually want to leave? And how do you reframe this not just being about you? Because here's the thing, guys. Many of us aren't that accountable to ourselves particularly once we've achieved a level of having a business that's over 150K a month, our wealth is thriving, our profits are high, our time investment in our business is low, it is very easy to self-sabotage, to take yourself back to freedom, or in some cases, even take yourself back to growth. Jeez, there's even been businesses that have gone all the way back to battle because they have self-sabotaged and sent themselves into a hole. So you need to get clear on your legacy. How do you create a purpose that is bigger than you? A meaning to life that is bigger than you? An impact that is bigger than you? And you should be focusing on creating the right levels of influence 
focusing on creating intergenerational wealth. And look, even if you don't have kids, this should be around how do you create intergenerational wealth so you can create impact for generations to come? And how can you give back? And this is not just giving back in money. One of the most valuable things that you can give back is your time. How can you share your gift, all of the great things that you've learned, all of the lessons that you've learned, all of the mistakes that you've made? How can you pave the way to make the future paths of individuals who want to follow in your footsteps easier as a result of your experience? Now, this is extremely important. And having all of these things in place is what's going to allow you to create a true lifestyle business. A lifestyle business that's going to afford you the profit to allow you to pursue the strategies like we spoke about with with Colin and Selena. It's going to allow you to scale the seven-figure business that creates you more free time to be able to do things that you want. And it's going to allow you to fast-track your way to creating $4 million in net wealth to give you that financial freedom and the passive income to live life on your own terms. So I'm going to ask you, from everything we've spoken about today, what's resonated with you most? What are you going to implement? What are you going to action? And more importantly, what are you going to stop doing? What are you going to ignore that becomes a competing priority that is just distracting you from what is truly important? I'd really love to know, guys. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, I'd really love for you to do a couple of things. First things first, I'd love you to join our free Facebook community on Facebook. Our community is six and seven figure CEOs turning business profit into personal wealth. You can find us on Facebook. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Search for Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor. Connect with me as a friend and let's have a conversation around what's resonated most with you in this podcast. And if you're interested in having a conversation around how we can help you grow and scale these five levels of the Wealth Pyramid, help you create more profit, more free time, and more personal wealth, feel free to reach out and book a breakthrough call with one of our scale specialists so we can have a conversation around how we can help you map out your game plan for the next 12 months to be able to completely smash it out of the park. Really looking forward to chatting to you next time. This has been the Enjoy the Journey podcast, and we'll chat to you soon.